You guys want to play a little game while we're waiting? Yes, everyone said. We're like, yeah, all right. Well, turn on your camera or don't. You can raise your hand in in private. I want to I want to play a little bit a little game. I want you to raise your hand in secret or or in public if you have 10 years of teaching experience. No. I want you to raise your hand if you have 10 years of teaching experience. How about 15? Uh, how about one year? Tim. Here you are. How many of you voice a little bit? Years. How many of you have been learners for more than 20 years? <laughs> how about 30 years? How many of us are still learners? <laughs> totally all of us, right? Social emotional learning is, is, is one of those things that I, and by the way, my name is Matt Neal, for those of you who don't know, and I'm new to, can everybody hear me okay? I just don't want to be that guy on mute. I'm usually that guy. <laughs> I, I I am new to education and coming to uh, uh, coming from the corporate world, there's a lot that I learned about social emotional learning and emotional intelligence and leadership and collaboration and teamwork and all of the things that Tomo Club teaches young kids. And so coming into this space has been really, really awesome. I just got back from South by Southwest and I don't, Janine, I love your picture, Mr. Tang. I don't know what each one of you teach, but if this is my little aside, my little five seconds to chit chat with everybody, that in our culture, in, 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 our, in the United States, we've always pushed math, English, those competencies that are, that are super important, but our cultures have been shocked, not only by the pandemic, but also by our responses to it. And so we're starting to see this learn everyone at South Southwest, every single major educator was like, we don't care what it takes to get help for these kids. We got to turn the battleship quickly because something has happened in our culture. And it's not just shoving kids to make them do more math problems. And it's not just getting them to use chat GPT to use English. We have to teach them social emotional learning. So how do we scale that quickly? And so as a corporate guy that's new to education, that was refreshing to me because we classically homeschool our kids. I thought I was the only one that cared, but what everyone cares about is the well-being of kids and not assessing them, but finding them where they're at and then getting to know them and then taking them to their full potential to where there can be where they can be. And I've seen Tomo Club, a little, little a commercial, Tomo Club has done that for my kids. But in going to South by Southwest, I realized that we're all singing the same song in unison, which is, hey, the kids are what matter first. And so I know I kind of went on and on, Chelsea, that's, but th that's our heart. That's the whole reason why I was out South by Southwest is we want Tomo Club to go into kids lives as quick as po as quick as possible so i know i've already said too much thank you i think uh, there's a lot more for you to be adding uh, there matt but thank you so much for the brief uh, chit chat that you've got into this uh, group now, first of all, I request everyone to be on a laptop or a desktop because we'll be playing a game just to get a, a glimpse into what a session um, would look like at Tomo Club. Just to understand how do we bring uh, SEL at the forefront with video games, right? That's one thing. But before that, uh, Matt will be talking to you a little bit about why SEL, why does it matter for educators? Uh, why do educate? Why are educators actually running behind SEL, right? 
or trying to get in uh, get it into classrooms not just the classroom but also uh, within groups uh, which require a sense of uh, uh, just the sense of belongingness right so uh, would love to understand and love to hear what are your perspectives on uh, be first of all being in the space and what are what are your expectations from this setting and this event and anyone can volunteer to go first I'm sorry I did not introduce myself I just realized I'm Chelsea Dean I'm the curriculum head at the but go ahead. Uh, I think Janine, you had unmuted yourself. Go ahead. So um, for me, I think my biggest thing is, is sort of the gamification um, idea of we're like meeting kids and using gamification as a, um, not in the sense of like, oh, you know, like, go on this path and then do a math sum and then go, keep going on this path, but like true, true immersion into um, what it, the, the triggers and the, the fantasy and the uh, collaboration and the challenge and the risks and the rewards and, you know, that behind gaming, um, not, not necessarily just the superficial, like I'm playing a game and then I'll just do math along the way and get a badge. Um, that's that's sort of what what kind of drew my attention to this. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that, uh, Jimmy. Okay. Would love to hear from the others who joined us as well. Can I ask a group of question, Chelsea? Mm -hmm. Conversation I was having with my wife about icebreakers, con conversation starters. Th these are things that we're all looking to connect with our students, right? What have you each used as as a tool to connect with your students that's been effective in the past? Confessions. So I, I would confess something and then invite them to confess something back. So vulnerability. All right. That's lovely, right? Feelings check-ins. Yeah, absolutely. Stories. Thank you for sharing that, Michael. Mr. Tang, would you like to share? Uh, all right. Q&A sessions. Definitely. So let me ask a further question. And it's sort of it's it's a baiting question, but you, you but I think you would assume that what it, what if there was a tool that we could put in the hands of educators and parents where they could meaningfully engage with kids, their kids, their students to and have a trackable method to see that those kids while they're playing those video games and interacting and they're engaged, we have a track. What if we had a trackable method for their growth as a student? Is that something that we would be interested in? Everybody says, yeah. And if so, what we're, we're seeing, yes. Parents are saying, yes. Educators are saying, yes. The kids are saying, heck yeah, I thought I was playing a video game. And so, which which is to me, that's the part as a parent and as Tomo Club, I'm like, yes. But what 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 I what I really want to know is we've built that tool, teaching everyone to use it. I, I was reading an article today about uh educators and the struggle that we all have, especially administrators, communicating what SEL is. And one of the things that I have found in coming into this is I didn't upskill myself. I assumed that I have an emotional intelligence of Socrates, you know, who may not have had that high of emotional intelligence. I'm not even sure, but we assume that we're really good at these things. And as educators, as Tomo Club, as those influencers that are trying to show people this value, one of the things that we have to start with is that humility of saying, hey, maybe I don't have all of the pieces. 
And I think the the fascinating part for me has seen gamification get everyone at the table together. Because as an educator, not only do I want my kids to be engaged, but I want to be engaged with them. I want someone to answer when I ask who's the president, <laughs> you know. Well, if if you if you don't mind, I'd I'd like to add to that. Um the other side of that is yes, the answer to the question of yes, uh, we would I would want a tool like that. But I think that's what stopped me from so many tools is is it truly engaging? Is it truly measuring student engagement? Or is it measuring what we as adults and educators and parents feel good about measuring? Um, and is it actually from the student's point of view? And um, and I think that's where a lot of games and things fall short. Um, and I've I've had the the privilege of seeing Tomah Club in action before, and I think I think it kind of I think it kind of solves that one. I like what you're saying though, because I've been challenged with the with the game designers and educators who are innovating, and they're basically saying, "Quit thinking for the kids. Quit even creating the metrics. This is silly." They're past, you know, so I, I like what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 hard to get past the like, I want them to learn arithmetic or I want them to learn their times tables. Um when in the end, like their engagement should be first and the side effect will be learning their times tables instead of learning their time tables and the side effect will be learning collaboration. Yeah. Uh, I think it's almost on the lines of how to learn versus what to learn, right? Like uh, we give them a platform. I'm not just talking about Tomo Club. We give them anything that is extremely engaging. If they're involved in that activity, what's going to come out of it at the end of the day is what are they going to take back uh, in a very unconscious sort of manner, right? Because that's what's uh, actually driving the learning, right? So a child sitting in, uh, say, rote learning uh, the tables, right? Just uh, uh, nine times tables. And uh, they're really confused. They don't know what to do. They're just uh, trying to rote learn it. Suddenly, that's, uh, there's an exam that's coming up. Uh, the teacher's asking them, what is nine times four? And they're just, uh, what do you call, repeating the entire thing to themselves. And they have no idea what's happening. Right. On the other hand, say a child is just playing with stones, they've understood that uh, multiplication is just repeated addition. They've understood the concept and yeah, that's it. They know what to do, no matter how slow or fast the process is. So basically what we've done is we've taught them how to learn it, but not what to learn exactly. Right. So I think that's, that's primarily where... Uh, the idea of even building Tomo Club came from, right? How do you make learning as engaging as possible? And especially with concepts like uh, leadership, right? Once you start talking about, talking to children about their emotions, it's almost like, why are you telling me that? It's not something that I don't know, right? I know that I'm happy. I know that I'm sad. I don't need to be telling you that. Or I don't need to be discussing this with my group. But if they're able to do that or if they're able to take uh, that little bit back from a game, it's the best way to engage them uh, in conversations that are going to be effective even in their day-to-day -day lives. Right? So, and I think all of us here right now have come with the perspective that, or at least that's my assumption, that there is value in social and emotional learning. Right? And uh, would love to hear from Mr. Tang or Michael, Mr. Michael, uh, what are your thoughts on what you were just talking about? And would you like to add something? Um, sure. So over the course of my 14 year career teaching elementary school, um, my, I guess, priorities in education changed drastically. At first, it was all about what I was raised to think, that it's all about getting good grades, wanting everybody to get, you know, the best standardized test scores and get into a good college and all that. And um, then I went to a training 
of the Silicon Valley Math Initiative, where they showed a video by Eduardo Bersino from a TED Talk on growth mindset. And I saw how all the trappings of a fixed mindset held me back from manifesting my true potential. And it just, yeah, it was something I didn't want any other students to ever go through. So I focused on <clears throat> starting to teach mindset and taking more and more time away from traditional academics and working on personal growth and life lessons. Luckily, I always had principles that let me have complete freedom. It's a pretty high performing school and, you know, uh, uh, kind of like slightly upper middle class. Um, so I was concerned there are four other classes at my grade level and I know that their test scores are going to come back pretty strong. So if I'm spending hours less each week teaching math and English and, you know, all the core subjects, what's going to happen? Um, I found that out of the five classes at the grade level, um, I was able to still be number one or number two, but the big difference was on the playground um, and how the kids interacted with each other. Uh, the last, you know, two years that I was in the classroom, uh, I didn't have a single kid even call another kid a name or do anything mean like they'd have disagreements sometimes especially if they're working on a group project but they were a lot more respectful to each other and they'd you know get along boys and girls would be playing together at recess you know kids from different ethnicities would be playing together so uh, I'm a full believer in that education needs to sh shift to the soft skills and any tools that help teachers to do that because I think a lot of there has been a big shift into teaching mindset uh, and mindfulness in a lot of schools. But right now, I think a lot of what's being done is the equivalent of the D.A.R.E. program for drugs. It comes off as very buzzwordy uh, and very um, kind of detached and impersonal. So even if it creates a logical understanding within the students, we don't actually, even people like me that consider them very logical people, very mathematically minded, uh, scientific minded people, uh, we do not make our decisions based on logic. Otherwise, we'd all be eating vegetables because we all know that that logically makes sense. But I don't feel an emotional response when I eat a Brussels sprout the same way that I do when I eat a potato chip or a bar of chocolate, right? So we all, all make our decisions based on emotions. And I'm afraid that a lot of the ways that we're teaching things that are very valid does not connect emotionally with the students. So I'm looking to see if uh, these games do. Sorry, that was kind of rambly, but. Mr. Tang, I, I must say, I'm a little partial to Brussels sprouts. I'm just saying, like, I might actually choose that over chocolates. <laughs> That's but good. I, I, It'll be a lot healthier than me. <laughs> <laughs> when you get the um, emotional I, understanding to exercise or eat vegetables, <laughs> then you will really do it. Uh, I'm, I'm working on that. A but I'm, I'm 100%. Vinegar. Yes. A little something, but, yeah. But I, I'm 100% with you. Is, um, I think what you're speaking about, again, is, is kind of that idea of, like, is the social emotional curriculum, again, it feels like a very bestowed upon the student curriculum, more for the check in the box on the, you know, on the institution side rather than what really is the student engaged in. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, I was just, so I've been, I left the classroom to kind of embark on my own journey, trying to create a program that's going to address these needs. Uh, wow. But in the meantime, I've been tutoring uh, some kids and I was asking one of the students that I'm working with, a fourth grader, what he knew about growth mindset. And he was like, oh, yeah, we learned about it in third grade. And it's all about, you know, improving yourself. Um, and I'm like, that's a very shallow understanding of growth mindset. That's not actually what it really means. It's really more about neuroplasticity and how everything is in a state of change. And growth mindset also means that if you don't work on something, you'll lose it. So it's not just about the improvement. It's about the change and how, yeah, how uh, time and effort will lead to results. And yeah. That's uh, something I realized is even when it's being taught, it's being taught in a way so that they have an incomplete understanding of the concept. Right. And uh, I think that was very, very insightful, uh, Mr. Tang. I, I think when you speak about uh, growth mindsets, one person that comes to my mind is Carol Dweck, right? And the work that Carol Dweck has done uh, on growth mindset. 
and uh, i still recall the ted talk that uh, child beck gave on growth mindset and just that understanding of not just kids but also adults not having the understanding of what sort of what does growth really mean right in terms of uh, just achieving certain goals not just achieving goals but in their day to day lives i think that's a solid gap that's missing and as you mentioned that you took time off your classroom just to build uh, just to unlearn certain things and grow yourself right grow into the person that you currently are so that you're able to provide the same thing to the kids and i think that's what educators or motivated educators really are looking for currently right or just to provide that sort of insight into uh what sort of skills are really required in the future right are uh, the hard skills of course hard skills are always required that's something that they'll be doing regardless of whether you teach them or whether uh, they're in a process because at the end of the day that's how they're going to gain their livelihood but what about the soft skills how do they become better citizens uh, or how do they become uh, better members of the community how do they uh, grow a community together how do how do they motivate each other into becoming uh, or to achieve the pinnacle of uh, achievement right that there is for them and not just in terms of test scores as you mentioned earlier right and i completely agree with that uh, sort of idea that there is a certain gap between uh, the understanding that even educators currently have or certain educators i won't say all that certain educators currently have about what sort of skills are really important to be taught right and yeah. in what manner so yeah uh, so thank you so much for sharing that in such a great description and based off of your own uh, experience yeah yeah mr tang thank you so much for sharing that because it it, it is that connection of you're taking the time to see the kids and grow them and they're growing and changing but then the societal the community the friendship effect it change that changes everything it changes that kid's trajectory but it changes their friends and we find that we find unexpected results where kids are nice to their brother for 8 hours after a vid after they're playing a session at Tomo club and we're like what i guess we're going to have to send this with to the lab <laughs> You know, I don't know what's happening, but I love that you shared with us what exactly your passion, what you're doing, your your course correction. All of that is so encouraging and and especially the unexpected result of good citizenry. <laughs> if that's a word, I think I made that one. Yeah, yeah my pleasure. It's something that I could talk a lot on. So <laughs> if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. i can definitely say you're in the you're in the right space right now so yeah and uh, is there any, if there's anything else that you would like to discuss regarding uh, particularly sel and schools right would love to know a little bit about the different programs that you as educators have been using uh, in the field of sel or just social emotional skills or life skills Yeah, I can start. Um, so for me, a lot of it comes from just looking at my own life, looking at what I struggled through, looking what at what I wish somebody taught me, you know. And there's just so much. Uh, self confidence was a huge, huge issue throughout my life. Even though I was a top achiever, you know, I'm scoring ninety ninth percentile on all the standardized tests, and my parents and my relatives and my teachers, everybody's telling me I'm so smart, and yet I'm the shyest, quietest kid. and i don't want to be picked to answer anything even though i know the answers right and i don't feel like i'm ever enough no matter what i'm doing and then when i don't win an award or anything like that then i was brittle in the face of adversity is what eduardo persino says and it caused me to and i think it's a good thing i wouldn't have become, become a teacher and i wouldn't have really figured out what mattered to me if i didn't have to break first right but at the same time i know that I'm only a fraction of the true potential that I had as a human being and I think that a lot of it starts with uh, I'll share one of the most powerful lessons that I've ever taught if um you know it helps uh it's what caused 
students to get along so well and not uh, pick on each other and be able to play together and cooperate with each other. And I think it's also the key to solving a lot of depression and um, isolation in uh, junior high and high school. So I think the main problem is that we are not developing true and profound knowledge of self. And I think that the way that we are developing knowledge of self is with labels. We figure out what we are and what we aren't. But every time we create a label for something that I am, like I'm one of the honor kids or whatever, I'm a band member, I'm, a, I'm an athlete, whatever it is, we actually are creating a fixed mindset. It's actually a limiting belief. Um, you know, if I'm the class clown, then I'm not always funny. You know, and same with me telling myself that I was a shy kid. I wasn't always shy. You put me around my friends and nobody else is watching, right? So there's a lot of things that we live into, these like self-fulfilling prophecies. And the first part of this lesson, I'm going to have to adjust because things in the political climate have changed. But it came after there was a big argument between boys and girls and they came in at recess. And I thought about this movie that I really love called Chasing Amy by a director named Kevin Smith. And in that movie, it's about why did um, Joey Lord and Adam's character open herself up to dating women in the first place. And she said, it's so hard to find somebody that you truly connect with in life as it is. Why would I immediately half all my options? Right. So that idea gave me, you know, the concept of taking the entire whiteboard and drawing all these little dots on it. And I said, imagine this entire board was covered with little dots just as densely packed as I have created here. These are all the people you're going to meet in your life. Now, who wants to be friends with somebody who's just like them? Everybody's hands raise up. And I'm like, OK, so if you're a boy, would you want to be friends with girls? And all the boys are like, "Ew, no, that's terrible. And then the girls, I ask them the same question. And so it goes the other way. Um, now the gender is not you know, binary. I don't know how to adjust that part. But I'm like, OK. And I took a yardstick and I cut the board in half. You just lost all these friends. Those are people that you cannot connect with. And you want to be friends with somebody who's like from the same culture as you, you know, even if you are one of the biggest groups of people on the planet, maybe one fifth. So I cut it into five parts. You just lost four of these parts. And you want to be friends with somebody who's the same religion as you, even if you're one of the biggest religions in the world. That's about another one fifth. So I cut it into five parts and they lose all these friends. And then it's like, oh, what about age? You want to be friends with somebody the same age as you. You don't want to play with a second grader or a first grader because you're a third grader, right? Um, oh, well, you know, maybe that's like one sixtieth of the population. So by then, it's almost nothing. The board is already almost nothing. And then it's like, okay, what about people that like the same sport as you? You like friends that also like basketball? Well, what percentage of people like basketball? And it's like, you lost, lost these other people. And then even if you like basketball, you're a Warriors fan. You don't want to be friends with a Lakers fan, right? Before they, you know, very, very quickly, they start to see that if they want to be friends with people who are just like them, there's nobody. Now, here's the problem. We do the same thing to ourselves when we define our identities. So this is why kids that go through puberty feel like there's nobody else in the world that is that they don't belong in the world because there's no one else like them, because we create labels for ourselves. They even start to care about labels like brand names. You know, there's some people who are like, I'm not going to hang out with you because you don't have a Chanel bag. You have a coach bag. And that's not, you know, whatever it is. So labels are something that human beings developed to be able to tell what to eat and what is going to kill you and to sort like socks and underwear and clothes, like find things. But one thing that was never meant to be labeled is human beings. We were not meant to be labels because we had, we have the entire spectrum within ourselves. We have the potential to be all these different things. So when we label ourselves, we box ourselves in, we create fi fixed mindsets, we limit ourselves, we isolate each other. And that's why people, as they develop their identity and figure out who they are, they're not actually doing it with true knowledge of self. And that creates the isolation that creates others. And we don't even talk to the person we sit next to for four hours on an airplane. And that makes no sense because they have 100 billion neurons and they've got more wisdom in their life experience than you could fill a whole bunch of tomes with. And we're disconnected from that because we walled ourselves off with labels. Sorry, I hope I didn't take too much time. Yeah. And thank you so much again for being. I think one thing that I'm definitely taking back from what you're talking about is about how you've tried to incorporate your experiences in teaching uh, 
even kids about social skills, right? Not just social skills, but just regulating themselves in a setting where they're understanding the consequences of their thoughts and their actions, right? So, yeah, and that's uh, lovely. Is there any particular, uh, say, concept or any particular curriculum that you're currently using for SEL? And that's a question that's open for everyone. Um, yeah, I think we got a new face here. So I'll, I'll jump in here if no one else has one. Um, oh, Michael, did you want to go? Uh, sure, I don't mind jumping in. Uh, I would say the curriculum that's more common in the Midwest, I'm in Chicago, is Second Step. Um, yeah. Most of my time has been in the Chicagoland area, but just, just throwing that out there. Hey, thanks for sharing that. So Second Step is definitely a very comprehensive uh, SEL curriculum and they're trying to engage and trying to use all the castle frame, like the entire castle framework and um, incorporating assessment as well. But thanks for sharing that with Michael. Yeah. And I read uh, something that Mr. Tang's also shared. Yeah. So just making it up based on your personality and uh, life experiences. Thank you. I'll just add um, something that I've come up with over the years. Um, I don't necessarily use a part of the curriculum, but what I will use is I will, um, in my classrooms, I'll set up a, a group project. Um, and it's not always easy because I am also teaching math. Um, and so it, there's not tons of group projects in every subject of math, but uh, statistics for one, that is a super easy one. Um, and I'll, I'll use that in a sense to not just like send them on the way and just be like, this is a group thing, get this back to me by this certain, certain date. Um, we will go through the steps of dealing with, they will come to me with their questions about team members that that are have fell off the radar or uh, a team member that's a little overbearing. And we'll actually walk through and talk through how to deal with each other and how to have, you know, actual conversations through that and who, and identifying as a leader versus a follower in the group Um and um, and then the other parts of and I'm dealing with a, a, a little bit more of a, a population that has command over their time management, um, sort of early college, um, middle to college to to end of four year degree students. Um, and so I, I'll kind of completely strip the rules from the semester and say, there's, there's really, in a sense, no deadlines. I'll put up this pacing guide for you. But if you need time, you tell me. Um, there's no time limits on the test. There's no limits on the number of times you can take the test. So all the limits are basically taken away and you are at you are at your own mercy in a sense and you are in control. And I think that has, over the last two years, has revolutionized my classroom where everybody is uh, like 100% in control. And, and they absolutely fail. They fail. They don't do well on the test. They don't hit the dead the the pacing guide deadline, but then that gives us the 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 learning opportunity to say like, okay, did you procrastinate? Did you not plan your week very well? Did you have just a really hard week with your family? And and then then it's okay. Like you you know that I know that, and that's what real life is, you know. And I think that's where that um that other piece of what sometimes I've heard other professors say like is the hidden curriculum, which I don't like that term because it shouldn't be the hidden curriculum um, but that's where that really comes comes out to play dj do, i don't want to i don't want to mispronounce your name how do i say it um, uh, actually it's um dominique um but i just put dj just you can find me in dominique <laughs> dominique it's nice to meet you Hi. did you have something nice that you to meet you to Did you have something that oh. you wanted to share? Oh, um, I just wanted to say, like, um, I am a mom of a special needs child, so it might be kind of noisy. Please disregard that. Um, <laughs> um, and I feel like this program would be something that would be very beneficial to him. And I'm also an educator as well. I'm a teacher. I have taught um, in South Korea for the past like decade or so. And so I've um, 
helped all different types of students and um, getting that uh, interaction, like, because the thing is, I taught English as a second language, and sometimes I had to group students that necessarily uh, may not have gotten along together, um, but if um, uh, sometimes putting uh, students together based on their personalities, you know, and works, but it's tough with the language barrier, but what I do is um, I give them like little uh, self evaluations in their mother language so that they can say like uh, what type of learning or what type of environment suits them best and then pair them up based on that. And that usually helps out a lot. That's really I'm neat. Glad to be, thank you. I'm happy to be here because I've been trying to get in on one of these for a really long time and um, finally here. <laughs> I'm really glad to have you here. Thank you for taking out the time to be here. And uh, definitely, I think one thing that we've been also uh, thinking about is about how do we cater to everyone, right? Games can especially be very taxing for uh, kids who have not had the exposure to also play certain games, right? So to start off, uh, uh, the first month or at least in the first month we're focusing completely on communication and collaboration so these games or at least the first month of the games would just be about uh, you know giving them an insight into how do you communicate better with your team right because all of the games that we do play uh, are all multiplayer then none of them are uh, uh, individual games so they have to listen to each other they have to talk to each other they have to be in situations where they might feel uncomfortable to begin with but by the end of it they know that the that the goal is uh, a group's uh, goal right it's not their individual perspective that uh, is going to matter in the entire group's uh, uh, game session right and other than that what they're also doing is that they're debriefing with the moderator what they're doing during the game, right? So they're going to have like, so I'm just giving you an insight into what a usual session uh, at Tomo Club would be like for a child, and then we'll get into a gameplay, right? So we'll play a short round of uh, six to seven minutes. And before that, I'll just tell you how one session looks like. So the kids enter into the uh, enter into the session there would be around uh, 10 to 12 kids together and uh, they will first go through an icebreaker they will do an icebreaker with the moderator then they would come to just discussing about what the game is going to do right what the game is about and how do they get in right and then the uh, then comes the part where they're just playing the game right and it's done in a scaffolded fashion. So the first round, we tell them very explicitly, it's just for them to explore the game, just to, just for them to talk to their team, just to understand their team a little better. Then they come back, then they discuss strategies that worked for them, that didn't work for them, what could be something that uh, could be better for their team or what they would like to change in the next round. Then they get into that. And what I mean, I can always say that the second round is always better than the first one, right? Because practice always makes better. So after that, they come back, they discuss what was better, how can they improve on certain things. And then there's a short round where the moderator is not intervening, but it's a completely uh, free zone for them to just discuss amongst their groups about the strategies that would work for them. And then the last part is the main part where they're debriefing whatever they've done during the session and they're connecting whatever they've done back to their real life, right? So what we're going to do now is that we're going to get into a short game and uh, we'll just love a show of hands of how many of us are currently on a laptop or a desktop. Okay, one, two, all right. So it's four of us, four, five, all right. So we're going to go out into breakout rooms, but before that, I'm sharing the sharing a link in the chat box. Give me a moment. 
yeah, I've shared a link in the chat box. Would love if uh, everyone could just quickly uh, go into the link and then I'll give you the following instructions. As soon as it opens, click on run game. Right, then type in your name. And in the region, uh, just select Europe as the region. Yep, I see a hand raised. Select Europe as the region and then click connect. Click on connect. Let me know if you've done that. A quick uh, thumbs up would be helpful. Perfect. Yeah, it'll just take some time to load, Mr. Peck. It should come Kelsey, up. do you want me to join as a spectator or player? Yes, please. A spectator. Yeah. Let me know if it uh, has opened for you, Mr. Tan. Yeah, perfect. Great. While you guys are playing the game, just make sure that you keep your browser window open and active. Yep. All right, once you've done that, just click on join. And the room ID is 545, so 545. I see Janine is in. So in the meanwhile, as y'all are getting in, um, Janine, would you like to volunteer to just uh, read the instructions for us, please? Happy to. The Crisis Crew is a sci-fi themed co-op game where players take on the role of first responders. Teams of three players each explore a high security top secret military facility that is that was vacated due to unusual activities. Uh, the objective is to find a safe passage for the authorities to retake control of the facility. The facility has uh, 50 underground levels, each with a unique layout and various security contraptions, including sliding ramps, turn tiles, and path blockers. Players can operate the contraptions from the control panels using special keys that are scattered across the level. Um, should I be sharing screen? Are you guys flipping through the instructions with me and reading along with me? Not yet. Okay. Not yet in, but yeah. Okay. Um, so there'll be special keys. Work together and find the best route through as many levels as possible before time runs out. Thank you so much for reading that. Uh, um, I see Mr. Tang's in and just waiting for... Oh, Michael's in as well. And I'm going to put you out. Uh, I'm just waiting for uh, Dominique to join in and then we'll start. Hey. Right. Just so, clarifying, my, my issue was that uh, the region was wrong, so I had to go back to the first screen and change the region to Europe. Right. And then it was yeah. So you just have to click on reconnect, right? And uh, you'd be able to change the region. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing that with Michael. And just a quick uh, update into what this game is going to be about. You're going to be using your arrow keys to move, to move around, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you might have to use the space bar or you would have to use the Q and E buttons to just uh, move past the contraptions. But you'll have to take each other's help, right? So mm -hmm. it's going to be a short round of six minutes where you will be playing with another person, right? And you have to get the flag point. So the goal is to get the flag point, all right? And together. So you cannot leave anyone behind. Okay. Right? Uh, Dominique, were you able to join? Yes, yes, I am. But right now it's showing me how to play, like read the tutorial. Okay. I don't see you on the screen yet, that's why. Like I, okay. Yeah. Once I finish the tutorial, what do I do exactly? Do you see, and I read the, the tutorial thing on the bottom, bottom right corner. What? Yes, I, I read the tutorial, that? Yeah. 
could be clicked. Okay. No, I'm just huh? Yeah, I, I still can see you in though. Uh, would it be possible for you to refresh the screen and join it? Okay, I'll try again. Let's... Yeah, it'll be 5.45. So Janine and Mr. Tang, you'll be in one room. I'm just quickly going to get you into your uh, breakout room, right? And uh, please keep the browser open so that you don't get dropped off, right? So you can keep yourselves unmuted throughout so that uh, you're not coming back to Zoom and it's not dropping you off. All right? Okay. All right. Then, yeah, I'll open the room for you. Hi, has it started yet to you? Uh, not on my end. Nope. Dominique, I... It's... No, I mean, we're still in the place where you have to... It tells you how to play. That's where I am. Okay. So I'm going to send the link to you again. Right? And I'm quickly going to walk you through this. So send the link in the chat box. Just go on the link in the chat box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah. Let me close out this again. Second, sorry. You want me to do it as well? No, I think you're fine, Michael. Okay. Yeah. Would you prefer me to call you Mr. Michael or Michael's fine by you? Uh Michael's fine. If you if, formal would be Dr. Allen, it sounds kind of oh, weird or off the hours. Okay. To me, it means I'm it's too formal for me today. <laughs> okay, all right. Michael's fine. Michael's fine. Okay. Um, so just click on run game and then Dominique, can you hear me? Hi. Uh yes, I'm back in the chat box. I was looking for it. Okay, here it is. Yeah. So Change. I can okay. see. Run. Okay, I'm on run game. Run game. As it's soon as again. yeah. Yeah, put in your name. Yeah. All right, put in your name. And then select the region as Europe. All right, so you'll see two arrows uh, on either side. So just select the uh, region as Europe by toggling between those. Let me know if, it, uh, if there's any problem at your end. Or if you're having any is five four five as a room number? Yes, five four five. Okay. And the region okay. is Europe. Yes, and it's spectator, correct? No. Uh, okay, it just tennis player. Pardon me. You have to join us, player. Oh, that's pop. I heard yeah. you say something. Okay. <laughs> right. So in the meanwhile, we're just uh, going to go through the uh, the instructions. It's really fun, right? That's something that I can vouch for. It's going to be fun. And uh, the first round is going to be a little tough, but you'll get the hang of it. So yeah. Okay. Let's see. Just waiting for a couple of minutes. Minutes. Um, so, um, that I already joined. Yeah, so just join with another name, maybe. Okay. Yeah, join with another name. Um, Michael, you got dropped off, so you'll just have to join back again. I think it's just because of the internet it gets lagged out sometimes. Okay. Just yeah. Go on later. I think I hit refresh. I probably wasn't supposed to do that. That's what it was. Oh, all right. Should be back, though. All right.
Yep, you're in. And I see that, uh, all right, we're all in and I'm starting the game. It should start for everyone. And yep, I see everyone here. So do we, are we communicating with each other or are we just going? Yes. I mean, first, I think just uh, try to get, just try to move around, see what's happening. Use the arrow keys to go up, down, left and right. See where your fellow uh, teammate is. Yeah. I think there's a few. So you need to collect all the keys and everything, right? I think so. Yeah. Why don't one of you try and zoom out, try zooming out and see what's happening or what you need to do. Uh, zoom out? How do you do that? Do you see a zoom out button on the left corner of your yeah. screen, bottom left corner of your screen? Yeah. Going fast. <laughs> so, um, let me see. What is, what's the button for it? Uh, do we just click on it? Okay, I'm letting my son play. Is that okay? That's fine. That's why he, that's why it's moving so fast. <laughs> um, zoom amazing. back. In. Yeah. So I zoomed out, but how do I zoom back in? So once you start moving, you Hello, leave. Michael. Hello. <laughs> How do you zoom back in? Just uh, start moving again. You'll be, yeah, you'll be zoomed in. Are you able to move? Oh, yeah. Okay. Got you. Got it. Uh... You need to go to the extreme right. So figure a way out to get to the extreme right. Right. Like right screen. Okay. Ultimately, we're going to the right. Is that what you're saying? You have to go to the right because the flag point is uh, towards the right. Got you. Yeah. We got to go somewhere to the right. Yeah, there. So one of you has to open this contraption so that the other person can pass through. How do you do that? Perfect. We open. No pressure, but the other team is already at the second level. <laughs> well, how do we open the contraption? Um, you need to go to the control panel. Yeah, great. And you need to tell your teammate to go to, a, to the contraption so that uh, you're not wasting any keys. All right, I think you got to go to, yep, to the, to the to your right, that little space there. Then once I come down, I think when I hit the space, you should be able to get through. Let's see what happens. Uh, so go back to that arrow, uh, that black and orange um, fixture or icon. You go back there. I should be able to hit the space to get you through, I think. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. And now they need to get you out. It worked. It worked. It worked. Yeah, I'm still oh, here. But then how do I get you out? Then uh, stop. Try zooming. Oh, stop. Stop. You zoom yeah, now. Uh, oh, you have to do it on the other side. So you see that you see that uh contraction on your side. If you go, um, I'm gonna zoom okay, out. this. Yeah, okay, there hit, we go. I think I got it. You hit the space. So out. let me help you out. Uh, okay. You have fifteen seconds left. <laughs> Is this a timed activity? Okay, nine seconds. But where did he go though? I'm where still did there. you go? Try zooming out. I'm still here. Oh, okay. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, I don't. Okay. It's okay. It's just started, but we still have to have time to uh, explore this, right? But now that yeah, I wish I had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're fam more familiar with it. Yeah. Okay. Collect all the keys. What? Ah. Hi, okay, go ahead, Mambo. Okay, I think we go. Um, we have to work together, so you have to. Okay, let's see where he's going. Go this way. Nope, there's nothing there. Go the next way. Turn to the right. Go up. Uh, wait. Up. 
to the right. Oh. Go up, I said. Up. Yeah, you can see. You can see where to go. Okay. Uh oh. What do we have to do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to let you get through. I got easy to do. Let me inside that. This way. Yeah, go ahead. Yep, there you go. Yeah, but we have to chat with. Oh, I think I understand. Like, you only have um that circuit looking thing. It gives you like five seconds to go to the other side. So okay. I think like whenever you see those circuit things, we should be like close by, so that we can both pass to the other side. If if not, you're just gonna be left behind, and that's not that's not good. You have to work together. That's if right. You have to collaborate. You know what collaborate means when you work together. Yeah. Okay, go down. Let, let's see if it could work. So there's, to... one of, there's one on the other um, side. So take it on the other side. If you do. Oh, take it to the other side. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. If you're over there. Just go around to the right. You should see another one over there. You click the jump on that. I think it'll open me up. Bye, Zoom. Yeah. Yeah, you are uh, you're too far. Yeah, back to where okay, right, now, right when you cross. Right here? Uh, keep coming, go down, down, and then there. Yeah, yeah, let me try. Okay, that should sure. be if you take the space bar. Uh, but I don't think it that looks like um. Washing machine. Yeah, the washing machine is what it should. What should do it? Try, try hitting the space bar while you're on the washing machine. See what happens. Okay, thank you. Washing machine. Space. Okay. okay, it just turns green. Yeah. All right, so you can, now we can now we can move. Oh, I think. Okay. Okay. That's uh, you have my teammate. Okay. That was okay. okay. There's nothing there. We're down to get uh, Okay. Go ahead, you go. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, hurry up, yeah. come down, come down, come down. There you go. Good job. Come on, keep coming. Keep coming. Okay, keep coming. I think we made it. Go back and go uh, in again. We can go back in? Yeah. The one that's 50 seconds. Go right again, Michael. Go down. Mm -hmm. Go right again. Go down. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't even know. Because there's 39, 38 seconds. Yay. But... That was excellent. All right. So I'm going to close out all the book. Yeah, I'm not going to a party. <laughs> all right. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Maybe too much fun. <laughs> I'm gonna play this later today. <laughs> There's such a thing as too much fun. Mr. Tang and I are getting back online a little bit later today. <laughs> <laughs> that's also right. That that's the entire motive uh, to get uh, get educators to play this game, right? Now yeah. we have to. I think everyone has joined back. I see someone is joining right now, but I think there must have been. Um, a confusion with the timings because the daylight saving has just uh, started again, right? So possible, yeah, no problem. But yeah, so how was this round and uh, what are your thoughts right now? I know we're uh, well over our time, but what are your thoughts right now? It was so much reliance. Um on cues from the other person, um, yeah. I think. Um, I, I don't doubt that um, and, and that we would have sort of put some of the pieces together and realised that we wouldn't have been able to get out on our own But if we didn't have two people there. But um, just even part of figuring that, that out was part of giving each other cues. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Any other thoughts, like how you're feeling right after this round? I know. So um, there was a lot of things. There were a lot of conversations happening, right? Uh, just with each round, I see triumphant written there. But uh, with each round, you had something new to do, 
right? So it wasn't just about you communicating with your uh, partner or you communicating with your uh, with whoever was there with you, with your teammate, but also to analyze what was happening, right? And you weren't doing it very consciously. It was just that it was something that you had to figure out regardless because you got a timer over your head. You've got, uh, uh, um, so right now the number of keys is a lot. But otherwise, even the number of keys are limited. So the uh, USB sort of things that you'll see, those were the ones that you use on the control panels to move uh, or to uh, take off the contraptions, right? So you have to look at all these different resources to understand what is happening and how do you get out at the end of the day with your teammate, right? And how do you make the best of the time that you have, right? So... Any other thoughts coming to your mind? What do you think was the best strategy that your team or uh, that your team actually adopted or figured out uh, as you were playing the game? So I felt like the game was pretty intuitive. Uh, mm -hmm. I think because things were labeled once you stepped on them and it showed you what you should do. And then you could see, you know, if I push this cue or I push the number two, did anything happen on your side? Um, but I think what was also really helpful was to find the vision piece. So once yeah. we had that, that was really, you know, pretty easy. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of it's also just exploring the, all the places that you can cover on your own before opening up a door, um, I think was also useful. Thank you for sharing that. So what you've spoken about is how being independent in a team session or a team play is also important because you need to do your role, right? So thank you for sharing that. There was another dynamic for me too about the team player. I think, yes, the sense of urgency with the timer and all that stuff, but it was almost like I almost didn't want to get too far away because mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that both of us got through the door, you know? It was like that's yeah. I don't want to go out without. Um, so, yeah, that was interesting for me. Thank you for sharing that. So you already felt, even though this is the probably the first time that you're meeting Mr. Tang and playing the game with Mr. Tang, you still had the, uh, you still wanted to win the game together, right? Or at least achieve the goal together, right? And that's excellent. What about zooming out? Did were you guys able to zoom out during the gameplay? Right. I think yeah, I, I, as soon as we got the in the second get in the second round, it was almost like I almost like trigger happy on it. Right. Hey. Hey. Yeah, I like the zoom as well. I could I could actually see where where they were. Um and kind of say, Oh no, no, go back, go down. <laughs> um yeah, but but the zoom feature was great. It was kind of giving us a whole a whole picture rather than just a tunnel vision of going plowing ahead. So hey. Thank you so much for sharing that. And great observation there also, right? Now, what this particular game, or at least what we cover in the first round of, uh, of for the first session with this game is about how do you require, how uh, a zoomed out perspective is also required in life, right? So we do have a, I mean, within this game, you had to do a lot of things. But once you had that sort of zoomed out perspective, you felt a little calmer because you could see what was happening, right? There was a sense of certainty with everything that you were doing or what your teammate was doing, right? You knew where to start. You knew where to end. You tried to figure out a strategy based on where everything is, right? It helped to set expectations. Where do you think you can use a zoomed out perspective in life? Or have you ever used a zoomed out perspective in life? So I've been experimenting with a thought about just the nature of the universe. And mm -hmm. what I came to is that everything is ins and outs, um, whether it's our breathing or the tides or pendulum swings, even things that are cyclical, like uh, seasons, from mm -hmm. a certain perspective, they're just going in and out. It's just not linear, right? And I realized that our brains are designed to do the same thing. And it's like breathing. Um, it's not just zooming out that's powerful because sometimes you zoom out and you see the big picture and it's too big. 
there's just so many things in the world to care about and it just feels overwhelming like how can i actually change the world how can i actually save a child's life there's just so many other factors ah so sometimes zooming out is not healthy either But our brains are designed to zoom out, see the big picture, find something, get really interested in it, zoom in. But then sometimes we spend too much time zooming in. It's like not breathing or inhaling and then not breathing out. So the best way to stay happy is to constantly be zooming in and zooming out and then zooming in and zooming out. And, um, you know, anytime you find yourself stressed out and having great anxiety of something, over something, you just have to ask yourself, am I too far zoomed in or am I too far zoomed out? It's time to inhale or it's time to exhale. So yeah, it can solve any any problems uh, in any situation and lead to happiness, especially when after doing the zooming in and zooming out, you start doing the 360 all perspectives. Mm -hmm. So what I constantly do is I zoom in on something then go 360 around it, see all the perspectives, choose the perspective that's best for me. And once I feel like I've been zoomed in for too long, zoom back out, do the same thing. It's all context and perspective. And that's how you master your mind. Absolutely. I'm Mr. Thankful. Tang, thank you so much for sharing that. That is such a mic drop moment. And and that it, it, I'm learning something. We're We're all lifelong learners, but it's not a mic drop moment because that's your thoughts. You came to that yourself through the process of zooming in and zooming out. And now you're giving people that learning. Yeah. But this video, and I bring that up in this instance because this video game and each game is designed to create one specific, we're creating a safe environment, right? And then we're creating external pressures where we can make kids leading learning innovation learning leadership is not comfortable but we have to make it fun and engaging but we're putting them in life skills situations where they are uncomfortable but just that perspective of wait a second when i'm totally lost and i don't know what to do maybe the best thing to do is slow down and zoom out or next level thinking is what you're saying why don't you think about zooming and zooming in and zooming out on every level you know but for kids, it's just having that ability of realizing, wow, when I'm in pressure, I can slow down. Yeah. And so I, I love I love what you're saying. I, I want to take some conversations with you off channel because philosophically, I feel like I have a lot to learn from you. But thank you for sharing. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And you know what? One really interesting thing that you just mentioned about Mr. Tang so after every session, we send like a snapshot to the parents, right? We send a snapshot with what is uh, what we did during the session, how the child was, what was what were the kind of interactions there, and along with that, we send a few conversation starters, right? Or just something that the parents can do with the child, right? So after this particular game, we send a short activity that the kids can do, right? And what you just said about zooming in and zooming out again. We tell them to tie two strings together, right? And take one end of a string and try to, uh, what do you call, map it with their fingers, right? Just to uh, untie it again, right? So the perspective behind that is exactly what you were mentioning. But of course, yours is from a very wide uh, and from a very universal perspective, right? And here, just a very small thing of untying a shoelace, for example, just by tracing it with your finger because you're zooming out and zooming in again. And then you're trying to uh, say untie it or uh, just untangle it. That just helps them understand that, you know, problem solving can be this way as well, right? Problems can be, there can be a lot of problems. There can be a lot of factors uh, uh, leading to those problems. There can be a lot of factors causing those problems. But what you do with it Oh, how do you handle that is what matters at the end of the day, right? So, yeah, so that's, uh, those are our two cents on zo the zoomed out perspective and how does this particular game at least uh, provide that to the kids? So now you, yeah, anyone who would like to, oh, absolutely we will, right? And I'm going to take note of this. Thank you, Mr. Tang. And yeah, is there anything uh, else on your mind that you would love to understand or you would love to know more about uh, in terms of what the book club is, what we do? Um, 
I would love to know. And the floor is now open for questions. If there are no questions, or if yeah, you I guess I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so you know, I only know about this because I was doing lunch club and got matched with Avinash. And yeah, that was a while back. I sort of forgot about it in October. And then I saw on LinkedIn this yeah. invitation. Um, how how do people sign up? And you know, is it something that schools are paying for? Or is it something that parents are paying for? Um, how does that work? So right now, the cohorts that we have running is through charter schools because we've been vendorized in California and we have some pilot programs that we're working at with private schools and charter schools. And uh, parents can also sign up on, uh, like sign up directly on the website. So that's again, another option. Yeah. And for parents signing up, um, what's the payment structure so, like? Right now, it's two hundred dollars per month, right? And it's four sessions, so twenty five dollars per uh, thing. But the, they can also apply for a scholarship for their kids. Yeah. You said that's four sessions a month. Yes, four sessions a month. And the sessions are an hour long. Yes, hour long sessions, on a weekly basis. Okay. Yep. Four sessions a week. Wait, one session a week, session a four week. sessions a month. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we can keep answering these questions, but I'm still going to launch a poll. Would love for you guys to just uh, take some time to fill this up just for our uh, information. While they're filling that up, Chelsea, and anyone feel free to ask a question, but one of the things that we started off talking with in the very beginning was, and I, I can't remember specifically what it was, but it was matching kids in their community. <clears throat> Might have been Mr. Tang, but, it, and it, it could have been you, Janine, I'm not really sure. I don't remember, but matching kids with the the kind of kids that learn like them the good fit the, the you know older kids younger kids just to make sure that that we're not missing anything and one of the things that Chelsea and our team and and will send out to you is a, after the event is the curriculum which will show you the different levels of the different rigors because depending upon where kids fall in their assessment of the initial stages the initial games that we play we match them with kids that they'll be able to play well with and that will help them grow and that they can help grow. And so the specifics of that is very hard to translate in a webinar. Hey, look at this curriculum. It's really fun. But now, now that you've seen what we're doing and, and once you get the program guide, you'll see the way that, that we've broken it down so that kids do get assessed where they're at and then they get nurtured to where they can achieve, but it's all in cohorts to where everyone's working towards the same goal. So, and that seems synergistic to what you guys were into. Does anybody have any questions? right now it's it's really nice to see um i got to see one of the earlier games and i'm not sure if it's still around but um it's nice to see another one so i think we've come a long way from where we had started janine i think right now we're at eight games right eight to twelve games and uh that's fantastic yeah and we've i mean it's been a wonderful journey uh, from mm -hmm. where we began and where we are currently. So, yeah. 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 It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, if, you know, there's any perspectives that would help you to develop more games in the future, yeah, I'd be willing to help out because it's the same mission. Um, a lot of the times I kind of have felt too much pressure uh, to make this change because sometimes 
it's been hard to find people who understand, um, like you said in the beginning. Uh, even when I first tried to launch my program, a lot of the parents didn't see the value because they didn't understand how it would translate the same way that Russian math or something like that, Kumon would. And I, I was a little bit discouraged. Um, and I often feel like it's like standing at the shore with this like, uh, I don't know, thousand foot tidal wave coming as long as the eye can see on both directions and all the humanity is behind me and I'm just standing there on the beach with my hands stretched out because I've got nothing nothing else to stop this wave and this wave can be everything from yeah the the downsides of social media and depression and all these other things to AI to global warming all these different things that you know we, we try to stop and sometimes it feels very lonely just being the only one there so at least if you can join hands with some other people and feel like you're you're standing against this wave together um it, it's a good thing so yeah anything I said you know I'm not trying to copyright anything I come up with just use it um spread those lessons because every drop <laughs> makes a difference right so um yeah happy to help and yeah happy that other people see see the shift that needs to occur because if we keep doing things the way that we were raised we're going to raise people with the same problems that the world has today and that's not going to work thank you so much for sharing that mr tang and uh yeah i think janine's feeling the uh feeling the uh feelings that have been uh, generated and I think I think it's all of us right now because um, we're all coming from a space where we believe that the future requires these soft skills right or when we say the future requires it's the kids that require these soft skills because everyone is going to uh, find success in their lives right but how do you bring that sense of community right and when I say community how do you make it safe for everyone Right? Not just one person, not just one race, not just one uh, group, not just one religion, not nothing like that. Just everything uh, aside, how do you be human with each other? How do you be humane with each other? Right. So, yeah, and uh, that's about it for today. Thank you so much for staying an extra 20 minutes with us and uh, having this conversation and continuing this conversation. I feel, uh, I feel glad that we're able to sit. Uh, get people of the same uh, ideologies and uh, build a sort of community with Tomo Club uh, within the educator space as well. Yeah, this is Thank awesome. you, you guys. Thank you. It Thank was you. nice to spend time with you guys. Absolutely. Yes. Lovely to meet you guys. Lovely to meet everyone. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. And hopefully we'll meet again. And yeah, maybe we'll be setting up sessions for kids around you. Yes. I plan on yes. I plan on reaching out to to everybody just so that we can round in and 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 stay connected for all and alert each other to the awesome things that are happening stuff like that. Yeah, so, that's awesome. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. I'm receiving a mail from my end, so if you'd like to set up a call, uh, you'd have a calendar link there, and other than that, you will be receiving the program guide from our end and an example of a snapshot from our end as well. Amazing. All right. Awesome. Take care, everyone. Have Thank a great you. night. Thank you so much for joining. Bye bye.